Wake up, buy your payer people. It's a beautiful day. Go grab yourself another cup of joe and say hello to Jim and Michelle Rhodes on the Buy Here, Pay Here morning show. Take it away, you two. Happy Friday. Hello, everyone. Happy to, that you uh, are all um, joining us today on the last day of the week. You know, it's that thank goodness it's Friday kind of thing. It's been amazing to me how fast this week has gone by, though. And buy here, pay here. It is still payment day. That's the day our <laughs> bank accounts recover. So. <laughs> so, right? so it's like one of the busier days. Yeah. So let's try to keep it light. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Um, well, we have something fun to talk about today. We got several things. We got some announcements and things we want to uh, cover before we dive into our big subject. We kind of teased out there this morning the uh, the thing about hamsters. So some of you might be curious, what on earth? What about? What are we going to talk about with hamsters? So you'll find out if you just hang in with oh, us absolutely. for a few minutes. I want to first go back and talk about our episode from Wednesday. We did our White Hat Wednesday with Russell Moore, and for any of you who tuned in and and Russell wasn't uh, joining we did discover after about the 24 minute mark that he had um, had the time zone wrong he was uh, <laughs> and vacationing and, and had the time zone wrong so he did join us late so it was a tremendous episode we oh, definitely yeah. ask you to make time to listen yeah. to Russell those of you that are out there on the Facebook groups and other places where we meet Russell you know he's very generous he's an excellent mentor in this business he's always yeah. sharing stuff and boy in this episode he really gave some powerful nuggets that I think people yeah, are going to want to hear he's a great communicator too really So really yeah if you watch that. that that last week or Wednesday's episode yeah. rather you can It's a uh, longer one cuz we spent by about the first 20 minutes oh, talking yeah. about some really relevant things and it really yeah. flowed nicely when yeah. he joined in and then it, then we could really expand on some of the things that we talked Yeah no about. it was outstanding I think uh, folks should make a little time to, to listen to that one and Russell is and thanks again Russell for joining us it was uh, fun to have you and we look forward to many more uh, episodes with you and then uh, Michelle you had some other announcements I think we want to talk about I just wanted to let you guys all know again um, we are live on all podcasting platforms um, not live we're available right. on all plat uh, podcasting platforms if you want to catch us live um, then you're going to do it here or other, or other platforms that so we're, we're the going three live, places like we're currently live YouTube on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe over there and get the notifications when we go live. And then, mm -hmm. uh, also LinkedIn, we're live over there. And then in this BHPH success yeah. group, which is a private group for those of you listening outside of Facebook, um, then just know that uh, that is a private group. So if you're in the buy here, pay here business and, uh, you want to uh, stay plugged in, uh, that's just the most active community that we're aware of yeah. in Buy Here, Pay Here, uh, run by Tommy Brandis is the one who created that group. And so you'll also uh, find Tommy as a, as a co-host or guest with us uh, regularly. Yeah. Get him, yeah. So just uh, if you go to the, the podcast platforms, it takes us about 24 hours before you're going to see the, the episode from the day before because uh, they don't let you download things immediately. Right. So just know that, that if you are looking for um, – if you were looking for the the podcast from Russell, it wasn't going to be there. It didn't show up until Thursday. You can find it in YouTube typically. I mean, yeah. the, even the live is available yeah. on YouTube uh, within yeah. minutes. Of, of um, another thing I wanted to just kind of uh, just announce so you guys can be looking for and watching is Jim just recorded a great podcast for Tote the Note. So we have two podcasts. Um, this is more like the morning show, more like mm -hmm. a live morning show. And then we have um, Tote the Note, which, which is more of a structured format. And right. we just dive into questions. And and so he just recorded this, this week uh, a podcast with Brent Carmichael from MCM and with Naveen Batija. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, from Neo. Right. So those of you who know, um, know Neo and their topic was, uh, the importance or what, what is data telling us about loan performance? Yeah. So. And, you know, I think the way I phrase that, cause Brent uh, has been good enough to join us with this series that we're calling the hardest questions in buy here, pay here. Cause we're really trying to get down and take on some of the tough stuff that, you know, and, and so Brent obviously brings a ton of experience from NCM and, we so we talked to Naveen about this. You know, Neo is an underwriting tool for those of you not familiar with Neo out there. They're 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 deep in AI. They're they're data specialists, and they have created mm -hmm. a really fantastic underwriting tool that's combined yeah. with CRM. Now, the reason we talk about that is because the the subject really was what should the data be telling the average buy here pay here dealer. And I'm just going to tell you, you can tune in that episode. Naveen explains it well. Brent contributes to the conversation, but the reality is. What we're learning from all the numbers that are coming in with this new data age is that 
some of the things that we've always thought are not proven to be true. And so it's going to be mm-hmm. really important for us all in this industry to track the data and, you know, numbers don't lie. So, you know, we, uh, uh, we need to get in there and, uh, and tell and learn what we can from those numbers. And, uh, so yeah, by all means, I think mm-hmm. well, that broadcast should uh, be posted. Um, it should be this, uh, um, our, our intent is to have, a uh, do kind of like a, a massive launch of all of them mm-hmm. or of a large handful of them, um, this weekend. So yeah. our YouTube subscribers can find it. We'll yeah. post it over the weekend, yeah. but, um, yeah, you can find it over there, um, already, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, we do expect to be, uh, on the podcast channels as well. For yeah. those of you who prefer to listen to the audio as you roll down the road like that, then uh, you can do that. But. Yeah. There's going to be some great stuff. I think we've got so far. That's one of the hard questions, mm-hmm. um, a series in Tote the Note. Mm-hmm. And I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, that, yeah. that'll make five. Um, and in that series that, that should all be available coming, um, this weekend. Yeah. And people have really enjoyed the, yeah. the three that we did on business value. Yeah. Um, those have been, you know, popular and, and well-received. And so yeah. we're just trying to get the answers for dealers out there. You know, Michelle yeah. and I are out Good there stuff. asking the questions on behalf of dealers and trying to yeah. collect information. And so that's part of what our morning show is about bringing that stuff yeah. to you. So shall we jump into our Yeah, we don't have a guest week? today. And so Jim teased, uh, hamster wheels and what the heck does hamster wheels have to do with buy here, pay here. Yeah. As I think will probably be the theme, um, for many of our morning shows is, you know, it's kind of the topic of the week almost for us. We had a conversation with one of our clients earlier in the week and I posed a question to them that I've, I've posed to, I don't know, dozens of clients over the years. I mean, this is something that comes up periodically and I, I ask dealers to think about something differently. So maybe I'll just ask the question first and then explain. Like if, if you're a buy here, pay here dealer doing 50 sales a month, then my question becomes, what does it really change for you? If instead of doing 50 sales in the month of June, 50 in July and 50 in August, and this is an exaggerated example, exaggerated question, but what if you sold no cars in June and July and sold 150 in August? Mm -hmm. So obviously those are exaggerated numbers. Mm-hmm. but they're meant to drive home a point. And, and, you know, when I ask dealers that question, I say, you don't have to answer for me, but you need to be able to answer for yourself because you really need to look at what is it that causes us to feel like we have to sell, you know, we have to push, push, push to sell, 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 sell. sell. Where's that pressure coming from? Is it self-imposed? What, because in buy here, pay here. Now, if we're in the retail space and we need to create those profits and pay mm-hmm. meet payroll and cover all the, you know, mortgage, whatever that I get that, mm-hmm. but in buy here, pay here, the question becomes when we're enjoying the cash flow off of the contracts that we've originated over the last two to three years, what's the urgency about selling? And of course, Michelle knows me and most of my clients know me. I'm, I'm pretty level. Like I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I always have to j- tell people, you know, th- remember this is my excited face. Like this is, <laughs> this is what my face looks like when I'm I have, like straight face and yeah. I'm just pretty level. Yeah. And, and so I was even that way during my years, keep in mind, I was in the retail and sporting goods business before I got into the new car business as a salesperson in 95. Uh-huh. And then I, you know, I worked as a sales manager and then stepped in a buy your payer in 97. I, I think we need to kind of quantify this question that you asked, because okay. I think that, that it, that let me kind of frame it a little bit. Um, let me kind of frame it a little bit differently. Maybe, um, one is all of you out there that experienced lower volume doing COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, what did that, I mean, did it, did it destroy your business? Sure. Um, you know, or were you able to like recoup, re- regroup, all of that. Yeah. And the context in which we've asked that question of dealers is if you need to make major shifts or changes in your operation to help it be more healthy, to help it grow, to be able to, to catch up so that you can get off the hamster wheel. Right. There you go. Um, is it, is it feasible? Sure for you to step off the sell, sell, sell for, for a month or two and learn and shift and adjust and, you know, make those internal tweaks and investments and investments in your business so that when you're done making those tweaks, then you can hit the gas again and 
all of those, uh, that hamster wheel is now going to be potentially supercharged or, or whatever. So yeah. that it's like, it, it will be a better experience or you take those couple of months to set up systems and processes or whatever, so that that hamster wheel doesn't need you in it right. all the time. So, you know, I think, um, we recognize, so Michelle's, um, articulated that pretty well. I think it's, it's about, you know, what is it worth for us to, uh, pause and, um, and, and I'm never saying, you know, shut down sales. I mean, there've been times that I've, you know, I think I've shared with my own dealership. I would ask our team, you know, we, we don't have any business putting on any more contracts on the books until we get our collection straight. Right. Out, right? And so why, yeah. why would we, you know, create more problems and when we don't really have a firm grip on what we're doing. So there's that, but there's really just, there's training, there's mm -hmm. investment in, you know, whether it's writing out your process more, uh, you know, specifically, but I think going back to the original question is what does it really change for you in that example of, you know, instead of 50 in June, July, and August, we're doing 150. Well, let's go through some math. I mean, certainly if you think about the customer that you originate in June, they make their first payment maybe in July. Mm -hmm. So 50 customers times $450 that would have been paying in July. Mm -hmm. That's one factor. That's some real math, but that would be money that we would be postponing. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's really it. You're not, you're not foregoing it. You're simply mm -hmm. postponing it in the scenario that I, uh, uh -huh. mapped out and you're extending your portfolio. And another con con thing to consider is that if you, if you're going to just kind of, um, uh, slow down a little bit, that means you don't have to buy as many cars. Yeah. There's well. certainly that pressure on the yeah. system. So I think, you know, you know, that I come from a place where I don't, sometimes the nature of our business, there are unknowns and there, and those unknowns can, can create some pressure in our business. But what I see too often in, in many of the operations that we work with is that sometimes our pressures are self-induced. Yeah. Like we're creating our own stresses. Um, and, and so for Michelle and I coming in from outside, we're able to look at those things and think, what well, you know, there's, there are some solutions we could, we uh -huh. could maybe solve this problem uh -huh. if we just have to step back and look at it and recognize, you know, what, what are we doing? So staying on the inventory part of this is like, what is, the value of making that time, if we're enjoying all the cash flow, like Michelle touched on COVID, you know, we saw, like many of you saw during COVID, some of us were closed, like we were required by the state to be closed. Well, what did that mean to us? We quit delivering contracts, we quit creating sales, which hurt our paper profit for a period of time. But boy, our cash, our bank accounts Got grew yeah. substantially. Many yeah. of us paid down debt pretty aggressively. And so, you know, there are obviously positives associated with that. And, and I want to be clear. I'm not advocating for stopping sales. That's not what I'm saying. We, yeah. we obviously have to continue to feed contracts into the portfolio. And, but the question really just is more of a question of, in my exaggerated example, what does it really change for us if we stopped and made some investment in our, in our structure, in our training, you know, whatever that's going to look like, what is that really worth to us in the long run mm -hmm. and what keeps us from being able to kind of make that commitment to make that investment in our business. We just kind of jump on this hamster wheel and some of that's coming from just this mentality of we got to sell, sell, sell. We sort of focused on sales and, and I just asked the question, why? Well, like, what are we doing? And it's what? also uh, part of this, this equation is what Russell talked about mm -hmm. too, is he said, I made the choice early on from a good mentor that I wanted to be I didn't want to be a salesperson mm -hmm. or I, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a car, sales, car salesman. salesman. I wanted to be a car dealer Yeah, and making that shift out of, do I want to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations or do I want to run the operation? Yeah. And I don't want to misquote him, but I think he basically was suggesting, I want to, I want to drive that ship. You know, yeah. I want to be the one to, you know, lead the team. And so this is all part of, kind of leadership. And I think it's really just getting a, a grasp on this piece of it. So like I say, when I take on these kind of subjects, I sometimes, you know, have to make sure the dealers know me well enough to know where I'm coming from so that, you know, they don't question, oh, Jim's crazy. He thinks we don't need to sell cars. Well, you, you do need to sell cars. You do need to create contracts, create car payments and continue to, uh, you know, put contracts in the portfolio because obviously, you know, that, that, but you're really talking about an impact on cash flow potentially, you know, three years out. Mm -hmm. And because it's contracts and, mm -hmm. and we recognize that most contracts don't make it to three years. And so there's, there's a, a runoff element to that. But still, the point is that you're, 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 the impact of your cash flow is, is a long way off. You got mm -hmm. 
plenty of time to make plenty of adjustments if you did uh, take some time to invest in your company with those tweaks that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's procedural, yeah. sometimes training, whatever it might look like. And so like what, what we're, what we're really trying to do here is um, shedding light on, you know, we, we talk an awful lot about dealers that are, it's, it's they're so, 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 so busy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we deal every once in a while deal um, with, uh, with, clients or potential leads that it's just like pulling hair mm -hmm. to, to, um, to, uh, get them to get off the hamster wheel for a second so we can have a conversation mm -hmm. and so that we can see how we can help. And so part of this, it's of opposing this question and looking at it from, you know, the, the hamster wheel side is, is for those of you that, recognize that there are things that you um, either want to achieve that you're not able to achieve because you're on the hamster wheel or that you need to change, but right. you can't change because you don't have the bandwidth because you're on the hamster wheel. This idea is given to you as something like a light at the end of the tunnel, that there is a way, there's a, there's a way for you to be able to, to, this is an option. This is a yeah. suggestion of a way for you to be able to, to, Give yourself that time to create the business that you want or to create the change that you need. Sure. Well, I would say also kind of in keeping with what Russell shared about, you know, driving the ship and being the dealer, I think I've often thought about, and I've used the language with, with clients and people that I meet, even just in a business entrepreneurial mm -hmm. context, I say that I'm much more deliberate that's the word I always use. I'm much more deliberate in business than I once was. Like as a younger person, um, I made more business mistakes because, and, and one of the big ones that I think I see dealers make, certainly, you know, uh, to an extent in buy here, pay here, but certainly just in car business and even sometimes retail is like when, when we're struggling, mm -hmm. when there's some, we're, we're kind of got a lot of stresses and we're, you know, bank accounts are a problem and, and, you know, our ratios aren't quite right. Some of us have the mentality that we can sell ourselves out of that problem, that we can sell more cars and that will solve our problem. And so that's kind of where the sell, sell, sell thing kicks in is like, people think we got to sell, sell, sell. If we sell no, enough cars, we'll solve the problem that we're facing today. And I would just say that my experience says that's usually not the answer can be in certain scenarios, but that's usually not the right answer. And so that's, um, especially in buy here, pay here, because the more we sell, the more cash we fund. And if the portfolio is mm -hmm. not working well, now all we've done yeah. is put more contracts in a, in a misfiring portfolio. And so, you know, we, we don't sell ourselves typically out of a problem and buy here, pay here. So this is why I say it's just important to be deliberate, which means this goes back to the thing we talk about with working on your business. You got to be able mm -hmm. to step out off of the hamster wheel yeah, and go over there and make some quiet time and work on your business and, and, uh, and then be able to implement the things that you decide to, mm -hmm. to, to implement. So it's just about, you know, taking a pause. <laughs> I was just thinking that, you know, it's kind of like, all right, guys, if, if you need to be able to spend some time on your business, um, Jim and Michelle will give you a doctor's note. <laughs> you have, you, yeah. <laughs> you have, you have permission to be able to do what you need to do to fix the thing that needs to get fixed. And maybe and if you give okay. yourself permission, yeah. answer the question I posed at the beginning, uh -huh. what does it really cost you? So my case was exaggerated. It was like two full months of a shift. Yeah. And it may it not take wouldn't two require months, that yeah. much. So it's really, the impact is really pretty insignificant. Now, you know, again, if we have people that are counting on commissions and all those kind of things, then that sounds a little like a self-imposed kind of, situation where, and you know, and those kind of things. But how many rectified. of the dealers out there are the salesperson? Yeah. I mean, that happens, yeah. obviously we've yeah. got some smaller operations where they're kind of covering the whole yeah. thing, but I would just say that generally speaking, we, we just want to see dealers be able to, you know, step back and, and, you know, be a little bit more deliberate and, uh, and do some planning, uh, which kind of leads into, you know, Michelle and I touched on the fact that we're going to be uh, speaking at TIADA. We're excited about that in mm -hmm. late July and we're going to speak, be speaking on business planning. And so this will kind of tie in. I mean, some mm -hmm. of what we're going to talk about there goes to the real heart of this because to really plan, you got to jump off the hamster wheel long enough and really be able to say, okay, here's where I want to go with the business. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, now you can begin to go in there and, and do the necessary work. But 
you know, just showing up and, Hey, I got to buy more cars cause I got empty holes and I got to, you know, I got to keep the cars going. I got to keep my commissions for my salespeople and I got to go, 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 go all the time. And, you know, that's just, that's a recipe for not, you know, losing sight of what's happening in your business. And that can be mm-hmm. dangerous in any business, but in buy here, pay here, man, we just move so much cash. And if we're yeah. not really thoughtful about that and, and deliberate and, and really plan out what we're doing, then, you know, it can, it can get out of bounds and, and, uh, and we wouldn't see it coming. I, I use the analogy about, you know, get a wobbly wheel, you know, will we recognize if the wheel's wobbling, you know, that we got a problem <laughs> yeah. or we stop and do some maintenance or are we going to just keep driving? And uh, so this is kind of the, the thing that we, we like to have our clients think about, um, you know, and, and every dealer, we just think it's important in business and it can be especially true in buy here, pay here. Why don't we pause and get some feedback from our listeners? We got some folks listening I, in. We've, we've had, there's a few that we weren't able to see on our screen. Um, uh, Tommy, I love it that he, he tunes in. He's like yeah. awesome convo on a huge topic. Uh, too many need to sell to keep ahead of poor performing poor performing portfolio in order to not break covenants with their bank. That's so, yeah. And that just tells you a ton. That tells you that we're, we're kind of slaves to, um, mm-hmm. you know, some boundaries and, and it, it doesn't let us be as, um, as thoughtful in planning. If we're, if we're kind of at the mercy, you know, of those things mm-hmm. and we have to create sales, what does that do? That puts pressure on our underwriting. That makes us take deals that are kind of, marginal or worse Mm -hmm. it makes it just it creates a a recipe for you know we're having to create volume we're having to pump contracts into this portfolio and and that just when we create that kind of pressure Mm -hmm. that just you know pressure for buy here payer from either side whether it's from the dealer side or from the customer side I i remember working with customers over the years where you know and most dealers have seen this customer will come in and say you know, I need a car right away. I need an answer like now. And, and I always would answer, well, if you need an answer now, the answer is no. Like, you know, <laughs> I can't help you. Like uh-huh. we, we have to go through a certain process to be able to make a judgment. So if you want to pressure us to make a now decision on your approval, the answer has to be no. Like we have to take the time to make that judgment. Uh, those of you who know Jim, is that it, ta- it he's like one of the coolest cucumbers that I've I've ever experienced and so I it's been really fun just like that whole thing of like well then the answer is no right. because we need to do this how many of us would be like okay 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 let's 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 get this going the the interesting piece to that is that if they say I need to know now and you say no, then the answer is going to be no because we need to take the time. Mm-hmm. That's going to throw a stick in their wheel and make them stop. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay. That's actually one of the things that you teach an awful lot is that this is your land mm-hmm. and you get to control the conversation. Yeah, so, that's but, true. Yeah. Even for salespeople, the yeah. people that we train, we want them to have confidence out there. So that's part of the training yeah. that we bring. But then also, it's certainly obviously true for dealers, which, by the way, I, I sound like I'm picking on dealers this morning. And I, I really just want to take a moment to celebrate dealers because, yeah. you know, on a Friday, we get to open up and, and you know, collect car payments or whatever. But my gosh, look at what we've created. We are we are out there solving problems and creating finance solutions for customers who need us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hats off to all of you out there, you know, fighting this fight. We just want to try to help dealers work smart. In addition to working hard, we know people are working hard. Give people nuggets that give them like some light at the end of the tunnel. Like, I mean, maybe this is where we can go with this. I I wanted to do a shout out to, to, um, you know, Bill's always here. Uh, and we really, really appreciate it. Good morning, um, Bill. And he's, his comment, um, I'll actually throw it up on the thing, is he said, selling so many at one time can be overwhelming for the customer service side of the business as Good well. Um, that we have some people, uh, Brad Yoder is here. Um, <laughs> Greg King just said, pick on us, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. That's, um, uh, I appreciate the uh, the invitation. Absolutely. And, and J.R. Um, Moore, or Dr. Moore, Moore is, is um, has been has been piping in a bit, and one Excellent. of the things that he mentioned was uh, uh, that you wish that you had known this back in the eighties. Yeah, and um, when you got started, because it's um, yeah. Oh, it's, for sure. Yeah, most of us can. You know, that's that's the beautiful thing about hindsight. But yeah. also, it's just the benefit of experience. The more we've been out there and seen it, and this is not for me. It's it also includes experience outside the car business. Uh, so. You know, there are things that we learn and help us kind of make adjustments. And, and I, I think part of what, um, 
motivated me to do the morning show was that we just see so many young dealers out there and they're, they're brave. They're stepping into, you know, what is perceived by many to be a high risk space, mm-hmm. takes a lot of capital and they're out there trying to, you know, step into this business. And, and boy, so many of them are just doing it based on, they're throwing questions out on Facebook about stuff that is, you know, it's, I guess it's wonderful that we have a resource in Facebook. It's also scary to me that that's where we're going to get, you know, our advice about, um, you know, running this kind of a business just because it's, it's got so many um, potential pitfalls and some of those are really expensive when we make those mistakes. And so why, why pay that price when there's, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm selling our consulting service. I'm just saying, find a mentor or coach. If it's not us, you know, find some help because there's some real experience out there. And boy, I mean, you listen to that Russell uh, episode from Wednesday, he shared some stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll not tell you what was said, but Russell got a piece of advice from a trusted advisor. Somebody who was really successful, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, entrepreneur in his community who came to Russell one day and gave him a piece of advice that he still remembers like it was yesterday. So just you know, like I say, you can jump over there and find that. But I just think, you know, here's a guy who's had a lot of success and he had to have somebody at his point, you know, somebody tell him, you know, it's time to make a decision. Yeah. And uh, so I think it's just important to, uh, you know, to, to have those kind of folks in your circle and, and be able to, to step outside your business. I think for, that's the, really the, the theme of this morning with the hamster wheel mm-hmm. is when we're, when we're so tied up in the, on the hamster wheel that we can't make time to go get educated at the conventions and we can't, you know, go get the latest compliance stuff, then wow, what price are we paying for staying on the hamster wheel? And it's also when you're on the hamster wheel, it's like your vision gets really tunneled. Yeah. And, and you can't see that there are things that can help you because it's just like, I just have to keep ahead of it. I just have to keep ahead of it. I just have to keep ahead of it. Right. And, um, you know, there are really, there are people that have been around this business long enough that can mm-hmm. say, all right, sure. if, if you know, here's kind of what we see sure. and, and here's how we, you know, we might be able to give you some advice to, right. to, to help. Yeah. So maybe for that, today, so. just ask yourself, if you thought you were going to sell 10 cars on a Friday and you only sell seven, what does that really mean to you? <laughs> what is it? What's it really change? So uh, just, you know, it's like a yeah. way to think about, you know, what is, where's the pressure coming from and what's, what do we gain from, you know, that cell and 10 to the seven or whatever. It's like, what, what's, what's to be achieved in that. And so that's always kind of the way I come at Especially, things. I mean, it's, it's one thing if you have a very well designed um, machine mm-hmm. running sure. and that you can hit the gas pedal Absolutely. to make it go. But I uh, would, we would caution that before you hit the gas pedal, that you make sure that all the pieces look like they're running well and, and right. all of that. So there's, there's nothing wrong with, yeah, we can sell a lot and mm-hmm. we're just, we're hitting the gas pedal, sure. but make sure that before you do that, that you're, that you, you know, you've taken an inventory, you know, you, you know, um, uh, if there are things that are, are friction points or whatever that you've, mm-hmm. you've taken a look at them and gotten off the hamster wheel for long enough to be able to do that. Yeah. So that kind of takes me back to the loose wheel analogy. It's like, you know, we can race, 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 and we can see, oh man, we got a wobbly wheel, but we're almost there. We're almost there. We just push a little harder. We, you know, or, like, or yeah, <laughs> people in their car, it's like, well, it looks like the engine's overheating. How long can I drive this? <laughs> yeah, right. until, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's about, it's at some point it's about maintenance in your business. I yeah. think for Michelle and I, what you'll hear uh, for those of you that attend, and we, we certainly hope you'll come to TIADA. Those of yeah. you who have not attended Texas conference, they did share with us that it's it's perfectly fine for dealers from outside of Texas to come to that conference. They have one of the best, if not the best conferences in the country. Uh, they do a tremendous job out there. And we've got some, we've got an excellent dealer panel. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't speak to how many spots they have available, but that's in late July. And uh, so if, if, uh, if you can justify some time away, you will hear Michelle and I talk about in business planning, we're going to really talk about you know, for those of you who want to join us and stepping off that hamster wheel, we're going to talk about how to, how to assess where you want to go with your business, like writing your business plan and plugging in the numbers is one thing, how to make a determination about really where you want to go with your business. That will be the main topic that we kind of introduce and we will get around to talking numbers, but it's really important that we think about these other things first and how to drive the ship. Um, Michael just posted Michael Mills. I don't know where you're from, Michael. Um, It's important to step back and be willing to get a non-biased opinion from time to time. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And then also on that, I would say, you know, I think I've talked about this already on the morning show, but what you don't need at that point is a rah-rah cheerleader. 
Yeah. You don't need somebody saying, go for it, go for it. You can sell 20 instead of 15. You know, that's not necessarily always what you're looking for is, is a cheerleader. You're looking for a really trusted advisor who can step in there and, and, you know, give you, and sometimes that's going to be somebody that's already in your circle. It could be a family member that's yep. got a lot of experiences. If you've whatever. got a 20 group and you need yeah. to talk to somebody, you know, whatever it is that you have. Um, but just also know, you know, we, we, again, we love, uh, we love being able to, to have a platform like this so that we can share some of this insight. And we know that, uh, you know, it's, 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 you're entrusting us with, with that. Um, and so well, they're, they're just drinking coffee. They're anyway. just drinking coffee, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if there's, if there's anything that we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. You know, we can do like a discovery call and, and give you a little bit of, um, direction that way and, uh, let you know if, if there's something there that, that, that you might be able to, that we might be able to see that to help sure. you get on the the path or the track or the, um, you know, how you want to, uh, to see your business in the future. Yeah. We're always happy to yeah. talk to somebody about just an assessment. Tell us yep. what's going on and see if we can help. Let's, as we said, most of the times, you know, occasionally we find a way to, to plug in and help. And sometimes there's, there's ways to get there, but really it's just about, you know, let's assess what the problem is and maybe yeah. we can give you some tips and you can, you can take those and go because here's the reality. Michelle and I are doing the best we can to scale our business, but we know there's about 20,000 buy here, pay your deals out there. <laughs> probably not going to be able to help them all. <laughs> well, we are not. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this right. is because we have a better ability to be able to reach the masses and help right? and help on this platform, give insights, give nuggets, whatever that, that you can maybe just pick up and run with Yeah, and to get better. So congratulations to those of you that are listening in. I'm showing about eight live listeners, which means <laughs> there's about 19,992 <laughs> dealers who aren't word. listening this morning uh, so yeah get the word out well, there it's, it's been really fun to watch um now that we're on some of the podcasting channels mm -hmm. that we you know a lot of people since we're east coast they they don't they don't pop in on here oh, to sure. listen to us live but it's really beautiful that that we're gaining some traction with um people out there and in, in the ether yeah of, please send in your yeah. feedback send please in your do. questions we've got a survey i'll try to remember to post the survey in the comments when this uh this video yeah. goes out. And so we, we definitely want to hear back from you. We've got ideas. We're getting some great ideas already from those Absolutely. who are chimed in. So please keep sending in your feedback. We want to know how to tailor this show to, uh, you know, uh, meet your interests. Absolutely. And uh, if you got a minute, go to YouTube and like and, like and subscribe to the Octane group. And there's we're always posting new things in there as well. That is free content for people to be able to learn a little bit. Um, it's the end of the show and it's a Friday and yep. we're about ready to either go into high, high mode of collecting payments or, yep. you know, it's just Friday. <laughs> yeah. So again, we appreciate you tuning in and uh, yeah, have a great weekend. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be back here on Monday morning at nine Eastern. All right. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to y'all later.